extraordinary courage while attempting to destroy and did destroy a machine gun nest that pinned down his men. Corporal Stowers is one of the 1.8 million service men and women who have died in service of our country. It is truly an honor to be here and I thank all of you for being here today as well as the Stowers family. This means a lot to me because I think too many times in today's society the word hero is thrown around maybe a little bit too much. But today we're here to honor a genuine hero, a man, an individual who actually did something heroic. I give him all the credit and all the honor in my heart for what he has done. Good morning. If you would just bow with me. Heavenly Father, we bless you and we thank you for this occasion and this wonderful opportunity, God, to uh, certainly recognize the, uh, the blessing and the legacy that Brother Stowers have left. And we thank you for his family. We thank you for just uh, the fact that he served this country so well and the fact that uh, God, that we can come here and honor him, but most of all, we certainly want to honor you. And God, we just bless you for being a great God. We thank you for Anderson County and their leadership, and just the fact that they recognize this opportunity and the need, amen, to certainly recognize him. God, we just thank you for this occasion and this centennial. Uh, God, we thank you for this great occasion and this opportunity. We ask you now that you would continue to bless us and bless this particular program and this uh, ceremony. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, said us that star-spangled banner yet wave. For the land of the free and the home of the of the brave. It's very important that the one percent of the people serving the country continue to tell the 99% of the people the sacrifices that they and their families make on behalf of all of our citizens every day. My remarks will be brief. I would like to begin and end with a phrase that has resonated with me for a long time, penned by someone far wiser and more insightful than me. And it is that the lives that we lead and the choices that we make are driven by the values that we hold dear. Our national values can be found in the Declaration of Independence, which holds certain truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Moreover, you will find our core national values of liberty, self-government, equality, individualism, diversity, and unity being recurring themes in our Constitution. Sadly, Sometimes these values have been a subtext to our society until they become a headline. And then they are woven into our national narrative by the actions of people like Corporal Freddie Stowers, whom we honor today. Specifically, we are here to remember the ultimate sacrifice of Corporal Freddie Stowers, who was killed in action during World War I 100 years ago today, September 28, 1945.
1918, Hill 188, a tall, heavily defended hill overlooking a farm in the Ardennes region of France. He had extraordinary courage while attempting to destroy, and did destroy, a machine gun nest that had pinned down his men. Corporal Stowers is one of the 1.8 million servicemen and women who have died in service of our country while wearing the uniform of one of the five U.S. services. Our country's highest military award, 75 South Carolinians have been awarded this and the only African American who received this award in World War I. He lived and died for us, the U.S. He died for his buddies who are our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, the grandson of slaves, Corporal Stowers, fought and died for the national values that were spoken of earlier. He did this despite the injustice and oppression of past injustices against him and the black segregated minority of Americans who fought in World War I. Despite prejudice and racist attitudes that permeated our society at that time, as well as any fears and self-doubts that he may have had. Corporal Stowers' courage and sacrifice, along with countless others, have brought us to a more perfect union by living and dying for the core values that we Americans too often take for granted. Although he and other Medal of Honor recipients came from diverse backgrounds, they united under a common cause to defend our country and its citizens, the U.S., us and exemplify our national motto, e pluribus unum. Out of many, one. The lives that we lead and the choices that we make are driven by the values that we hold dear. It is my prayer today that the lives that we are living through the values that we hold dear are worthy of the sacrifice that Corporal Stowers made as well as the heartache and loss that his families and friends endured and continue to endure. Ready. Aim. Fire. Ready. Aim. Fire. Ready. Aim. Fire. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies Of liberty Let our rejoicing Rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. You know, it's a beautiful day today, but it wasn't a beautiful day back in uh, September 28th, 1918, when Freddie Stowers breathed his last breath. Actually, it had rained many, many days going into that battle. Uh, but Freddie was drafted in the Army in 1917. He was just 21 years old, so he was 22 years old when he died. We're talking about a young man here that has not lived a full life. We are talking about a man that was brought up in Sandy Springs, had great family values, knew what he was all about and knew what he needed to do. But keep in mind, he was 22 years old. And that's a very young man. Even in that day, it really was. But 
When he uh, was drafted into the army, he went in, down to Fort Bragg and then he went into the French infantry when they sent him to France. They sent many of the people into France that was in the 371st Infantry Division. Once he got there, he was transferred into the 175th French Division. That's the Red Hand Division, and many of you know about the Red Hand Division. As a result of the transfer, the African American troops were going into battle and they had to switch their equipment out. When they went into the French regiment, they were given French military artillery. So therefore, he didn't have what he had learned and been trained on. He had a makeshift type equipment that you will see in, uh, I think we had our, our exhibit blew over, but we brought our traveling exhibit down today. And if you did have an opportunity to see it, you had an opportunity to see that Freddie had on not only U.S. garb, but also French garb. So it was a makeshift type uniform. Then on September the 28th, 1918, several, several companies were decimated in that German attack. What happened was that German, the Germans came out like they were surrendering. And as the 175th Division went to capture them, they opened fire on them and many, many, many of them were killed. Freddie was still alive. Keep in mind, he's 22 years old, he's still alive. Most of the people in that battle are dead, or all of his, his unit is dead, pretty much. But what did Freddie do? He gathers them together. He takes control of a bad situation, and he gets them back into an army-type situation to fight for their freedom. And that's what he did. And Freddie Stowers turned around World War I. I firmly believe that at 22 years old. So therefore, this is the great man that we're here to honor today. This is the great man that we tell the story at the Anderson County Museum many, many, many times. We have three exhibits featuring Freddie Stowers. We have two traveling exhibits that Dustin Norris, our curator, put together. And he's here today. Dustin, I don't know where he is, but he's here. I want him to say a few words in a, in a few minutes, but he's put two of them, them together, and we also have a permanent exhibit that uh, features Freddie Stowers. We're working on a major military exhibit that will open in a couple of years, and that exhibit will also feature Freddie Stowers and his great story and tell the man that he is and about, about his life and what he did on that battlefield. But not only that, he's our friend at the Anderson County Museum. And if you got looked in your goodie bags today, you saw this little book. Our graphic artist, Miranda Hayes, she put this together to try to teach children what a hero is all about. Because Freddie Stowers is a hero. You know, we worship too many things today. But being a hero and this kind of a hero is something that everyone should look up to. So if you, as you flip through the little book, this is for children more than adults, but for them to learn about Freddie and what he did and to also think about what a hero truly is because a lot of times I think that passes by us sometimes. But not only that, I personally like Freddie Stowers, just absolutely love him. Can I tell you a secret? I talk to him sometimes when I'm in the museum by myself. You know, we have a 26,000 square foot building. Our gallery is 12,000 square feet. So sometimes when you're in that building alone, alone, you hear a lot of different little noises. And I say, Freddie, is that you? But the biggest thing that Freddie has done to us lately is our education coordinator, Linda Laparo, put a sand pit across from Freddie's exhibit and put soldiers in the sand pit so that the children could play with it. So on Friday afternoon when I was locking up, I went through and did a sweep of the gallery and 
Everything looked fine. I had to work on Saturday morning. So I came back in on Saturday morning and was turning on lights and stuff and there was sand all over the floor there. And I'm like, Freddie, were you playing with your soldiers tonight? I think he had a battle and I think he was teaching them how you win a battle, how you stand up for what's right, how you do what you need to do no matter what age you are. That is Freddie Stowers and we are so excited and proud to be here today. I'm going to invite Dustin up to tell a little bit about some of the other artifacts we have at the Anderson County Museum. We did bring a few artifacts today, courtesy of uh, Mr. Rod Gregg, who I think he'll be introduced to very soon. Um, he went to France at the hill, the location, with a metal detector and returned with these prizes. There's some bullet casings in here, some shrapnel shards and uh, bullets themselves and even one little strap buckle it looks like so do i want to draw your attention to these uh, they'll be sitting up here uh, we did also bring the traveling exhibit one thing that i like to point out when i talk about freddie is that when we think about the civil rights movement our minds go to the 1960s and uh, we don't normally think that someone from that early could have been a civil rights activist even if he wouldn't have called himself that um, he probably didn't know the effect that his service would have had on other African Americans. But um, heading into the French environment, he found himself eating and uh, communing with white soldiers on level ground. The society was a lot different than American society even then. And uh, when he came back to it, well, when other African American soldiers came back to America, they said to themselves, you know, why can't that be everywhere? And I think it was a huge step towards what you saw in the 1960s when African-American soldiers looked at the example of men like Freddie Stowers and said, well, if we can fight and die for our country, why can't we live equally here ourselves? Hill 188 is a long way from Sandy Springs. It's far away from South Carolina, but with a lot of effort, it can be found. It's located in the Meuse-Argonne region of northern France. I found it the first time in a rainstorm and I could only reach it because a French farm boy was willing to take me there on the farm's four-wheeler. I was there uh, working on a history project related to Corporal Freddie Stowers. Well, last year I knew my way back and I went back on a sunny cloudless day and I stood on the crest of that hill and I thought about Freddie Stowers. If you can find Hill 188, you better know its history already because there are no National Park Service directional signs on Hill 188, no museum, no visitor center, not a single historical plaque. One corner of the field does have a solitary stone marker, dignified, impressive, battered, weathered, isolated, and it bears the names of the soldiers from the U.S. Army's 371st Infantry Division in which Corporal Freddie Stower served. Otherwise, it's just a lonely farmer's field on an isolated hill with a panoramic vision. It is a beautiful view, an extraordinary vista now, but not in 1918 when Freddie Stowers died on that hill 100 years ago today. Then Hill 188 was torn and slashed, empty of crops or grass or beauty, scarred by shell holes, barbed wire, machine gun nests, and sandbag trenches packed shoulder to shoulder with desperate, determined German troops who were there to defend a vitally important observation post. And that observation post was the target of the American ground assault, which sent Freddie and his fellow soldiers crawling up that hill in an assault made on their bellies under merciless enemy fire. They took heavy casualties, but they absorbed their losses and they kept going. And the Germans 
finally signaled surrender, but it was a trick. Seeing a row of enemy soldiers with upraised hands, the American officers and their men stood up to take prisoners. And then the enemy front line dropped and the rear line opened fire with machine guns. Every American officer in the front went down. The leadership left was a corporal. And the assault resumed and Freddie Stowers stood up and he went forward. What measure of man was Freddie Stowers to do that? Who stands up and does what has to be done when everything in you screams to think just about yourself? And then he called on the surviving American soldiers to follow him, and they did. What measure of man was Freddie Stowers to do that? Who can inspire such trust and devotion that he would be followed in the worst of times? They overran the first of two trench lines, despite their losses, and they charged for the second one with Freddie in the lead. He had to know what that would likely mean. And he did it anyway. And he was hit, mortally wounded. But with his last full measure of courage, he ordered the men following him to take the second trench, the observation post, in Hill 188. And they did. And the battle was won. Again, you have to ask, what measure of man was Freddie Stowers to do that? Who is, who is willing to expend such courage and sacrifice for what is right? And the answer, a hero. And Freddie Stowers was a hero. Those are rare in every generation. Today in contemporary American culture, in every profession, we have an abundance of celebrities, but true heroes remain rare. Thankfully, we can look to Freddie Stowers. He was a South Carolinian, a native of Anderson County, a resident of Sandy Springs, an American, and a patriot. He accepted his country's call to arms in an era of inequality, at a time when glaring wrongs begged for correction and yet he did his duty. Maybe with the hope that duty done well would hasten that correction. Or maybe he was simply a man who was willing to do right despite what was wrong. What kind of man loves his country and does his duty in such circumstances? And the answer is a man of character and courage, a true hero. He was also a family man. He left behind a wife named Pearl and a young daughter named Minnie Lee. What was that last parting like? If Freddie was like many South Carolinians of his day, he had never been out of South Carolina. Did his family somehow see him off at the local train station? Or did they say their goodbyes in the family farmhouse parlor or on the front porch? What was it like to know you may never again see those you love the most? What was it like for Pearl when the worst of all fears came true, when that official notification arrived and she knew that Freddie would never come home? We can only imagine. But imagine we should, because we need to remember the rare heroes who rise among us, and we need to learn from them. Today, far across the fields and forest of northern France from Hill 188, lies the Meuse-Argonne American Cemetery. And there, amid the white crosses row on row, stands a cross adorned with gold-gilded letters with the inscription, Medal of Honor and the name 
Corporal Freddie Stowers. Freddie Stowers, who gave his life for his country a hundred years ago today. A model of character, of courage, of sacrifice. A model who represents the best of all of us, the best of America. Freddie Stowers was a true hero. First, I wanted to thank Mrs. Stowers Jackson for this invitation. Uh, it means a lot to me. And somebody said as I walked in, General, I know you know you you you're very busy. And what I tell people is, a lack of time is a lack of priorities. I've got 13,000 soldiers at Fort Jackson right now that are priori a priority for me every single day. My priority right now is being right here with you. And to the rest of the Stowers family and the Sandy Springs community, the opportunity to be here for this rededication and this commemoration, this 100-year centennial commemoration, really means a lot, lot to me. And I want to acknowledge all the distinguished guests that are here um, and the members of this great community. This is a phenomenal event that you've all put together here today. And back to Beverly, I don't know what it is in the air today, but you know, I had a confession to make today too. You shared a secret and I've got a confession. So I, I publicly want to make my confession here today. I don't know what it is in the air, but I grew up roughly 40 miles from here. As my grandmother says, as the crow flies. So I don't know how a crow flies, but roughly 40 miles from here uh, in a little town called Inneree, just south of Spartanburg. And I'm sad to say that I never knew about the story of Corporal Stowers growing up as a kid. So it is phenomenal that you have this now for our children. That is so awesome. I wish we had this when I was growing up. But having spent over half of my adult life in the military, I am proud to say that I do know a lot more about Corporal Freddie Stowers now and many other Medal of Honor recipients. As I learned about Corporal Stowers' story, I thought to myself, how did I not know about this story? As a South Carolina native, how did I not know about him prior to joining the U.S. Army? So for everything that you do now to inform those and educate those about Corporal Stowers, uh, as well as a family spreading that word, that is absolutely the right thing to do and that is absolutely what we must do. In order for me to answer these questions for myself, I outlined a few things in terms of what we can do and what we must do to keep Corporal Stowers legacy alive and at the forefront of this community, other communities in South Carolina, as well as our surrounding states. This word needs to get spread and needs to go far and wide. And only speaking about today, here's what we can do. And as you've heard, we can read and we can talk about the heroic acts of Corporal Stowers and the acts that he performed in 1918 that brought him to an untimely death. But it spared the lives of 133 of his fellow soldiers. I can express great pride in the 10 building complex that we have at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, named after Corporal Freddie Stowers. I can also talk about the elementary school at Fort Benning, Georgia named after Corporal Freddie Stowers. We can also rejoice in the fact that we get a chance to redo this dedication and simultaneously acknowledge the hundred years that have passed since Corporal Stowers made the ultimate sacrifice for this country. We can do all of these things today, but more important, and the more important question is, what do we do tomorrow? And what do we do the day after that? And the day after that? In order to keep Corporal Stowers' legacy alive with the honor, dignity, and respect that he, his family, and this community deserve, we must remind ourselves and others that there are currently 3,400 Medal of Honor recipients from various wars in our nation's history. South Carolina has 37 Medal of Honor recipients from various services. This means that 1% of our Medal of Honor recipients are from South Carolina. The number of Americans that serve in any branch, as you've heard, in our armed forces is 1%. So what does this mean? It means that similar to today, the chances of any community or family knowing or having an active duty service member of any of our branches is 1%. Not only did Corporal Stowers represent the 1% in 1918, he represents the 1% in 2018. 
It's a small price to ask the 99% to rem remember and honor the 1%. That 1% of our population has protected our nation's freedom for 243 years. So what do we do? Here's what we must do. We must celebrate soldiers like Corporal Freddie Stowers every year, not just every 100 years. We must remind ourselves that freedom is not free. And people like Corporal Stowers and 36 others from this great state are proof of that fact. People may say, that was a war long ago and in a faraway place. And I would tell you, ask folks, if you haven't noticed, we're still at war in faraway places. There are soldiers that live in the Corporal Freddie Stowers complex at Fort Jackson. And those children that go to Fort Freddie Stowers Elementary School are reminded every single day who he is by coming home and by going to school. We must find ways to remind ourselves daily about Corporal Stowers and what he meant to our community and to the state and to our nation. Like the hundreds of soldiers that live in that military complex in honor of Corporal Stowers, he was what we term a military age male, age 17 to 24. Like them, he wanted to serve a purpose larger than himself. And like them, he wanted to prove his worth as a man, as a citizen, and as a soldier. So we must not forget what brings us here today. And 100 years from now, it will be ideal to see the same passionate energy placed in today, placed in a ceremony 100 years from now. The last thing that I will leave you with is that Corporal Stowers' reputation was built in a moment. It was a moment on a hill in France in 1918 facing a Nazi resistance. However, his character was built in a very short lifetime, as you've heard, 22 years. It was built here in Sandy Springs, South Carolina by his family, by his friends, and others around him. It was this great character that led him to take charge of a group of soldiers that didn't have to follow his commands or orders at all, just as Roy said. Think about it. He wasn't a sergeant. He wasn't a general. He was a corporal. And that's why others followed him. This alone is a fact to be extremely proud of. Character has no race, it has no age, and it has no rank. They followed him because of his character. It is this simple point that brings us together today. And it is this point that we must not forget. Thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this day and the celebration. And God bless each one of you, your families, and our great state of South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. And most of all, I want to thank my cousin, Tony, for instigating all this to be put back together again. And I'd like to thank Anderson County and everybody that here has put it together. It has, it's a pleasure to be here. Protocol has already been called and a lot of things have been said. But I want to tell you about the beginning of the Stavos legacy. Uh, we were notified uh, by someone in Pendleton, South Carolina, where my aunt Josephine, uh, they were looking for someone of the Stavos family, and she sent them to me and Mr. Uh, Jimmy Smith, and uh, he started it all up for us and all, and we was invited to the White House to receive the Medal of Honor. So an invitation was sent to my, mother, my uh, mother's sister, Mary Bourne, who was Freddie's uh, sister in Greenville, South Carolina. President Bush was the uh, president at the time. So he sent his little six passenger Learjet down to Greenville Spartanburg, at Spartanburg Airport and picked up Aunt Mary and myself and flew us back to Washington, D.C. where we stayed there for four nights and three days. Joined the beauty of Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Institute and the White House. We toured the White House. We ate there. And we also did a ceremony there, which I have 
a pleasure to have a picture taken with President Bush and Mrs. Bush. And it was a joyous um, thing that we was that they were doing and that they was being done and we was greatly appreciated something that has happened a long time ago. And um, that we had a, cho a, jo a choice to be able to be there. A lot of family members were sent there. Of course, we had to be uh, checked out first. We couldn't just walk in there, you know, make sure that we wasn't coming in there to start trouble. <laughs> so it was great. We were treated um, really, really good. We had our own chauffeur. We had our own nurse. The hotel was beautiful. And we had the phone in there. We wanted to sit in there and talk. And so they carried us to dinner the first night. Our meal cost anywhere from $35 to $65 for one meal. And it, it, it was really beautiful. We had a chance to go into the Oval Office and see all the gold clippings and all this kind of stuff. We saw the president's uh, wives and things that, he, things that they began to enter the White House here. The first dresses that they wore to the White House. And most of all, we had a chance to go to Fort Benning, Georgia for the dedication of Stowers Elementary on Stowers School. And that was the 25 years ago to this to uh, August. So they had the dedication. I was there 25 years ago and had a um, chance to go back there again on August the 25th with a group that I have in Pelton, the senior citizens of Pelton, South Carolina has been spearheaded by Mr. Tom Allen in Anderson County. And it's been great joy. And going down to Star Wars Elementary School for the dedication, we had two bands that picked up, the Army Band that picked us up in my yard, standing in a tentia behind and back. And we had 18 people to catch that band down there. So we went down there, then we had a joy of going to Columbia for the dedication of all of the remaining uh, certificate people of World War One, Medal of Honor, and uh, that was that was something else. We they gave us flowers, big bunches of flowers, and all kind of things. And we have been treated like royalty. I wish he could have been here to see this, but I thank everybody for all the things that they put together. But then we had a chance to go to Fort Jackson for the dedication of Star Wars Barracks, and that was a great joy. And so it's just been wonderful. On August the 24th, I carried my group down there, which was 25 members from Pendleton. And they enjoyed it tremendously. They had a red carpet out there, but we couldn't see it, but we knew it was there. <laughs> we was really invited. They were waiting for us at the visitor's house to take us to there. And when we got there, the principal and vice principal and all was waiting for us outside, they escorted us in. The children were there with banners and work of Stavis family. And they carried us around, we toured it, and uh, it's, um, it's, it was just joyful. I couldn't walk too much, so they decided that they would get a cart, one of those carts that you ride and put out there and for me to ride. So I rode through the uh, halls of Star Wars Elementary, and um, they had uh, one of the things on there was a jackrabbit to punch it to go fast or something. They thought I wasn't going fast enough and the lady punched it and boy, I was flying up the hall. <laughs> and uh, it, it was really, really nice. I spoke there at the flagpole and I spoke between all the, before all the people, which was 580 students at Stiles Elementary, factory and staff. And I was there and I, it's been, really been enjoyable. And I'm not gonna stand up here and take all the time, but it's been so much going on then that I wish it could have been going on at that time. And here with me is some of the group that went with me down there, some of my group from Pendleton. Could you stand and just let them see the stars, uh, the group from, the, from, the, from my group? Pendleton senior citizens that went down with us to visit the school. And so we, I wish you would be able to go and attend some of these things. Like I said, everything is mostly have been said what I would have had to say, so. You all know I talk a lot, and you know why Mr. Burns is standing over there. So I won't talk too much. I already know that. But because God is so good, I have a minister who always tells us, 1 John 4, 8. He talks to us about love. He talks to us and he tells us 
that if you know about love, then you know who God is. And if you don't know who God is, you don't know what love is. So today, what we're seeing here is love. We're seeing love amongst all of you. And what I want to do today is share the love that we have. Mr. Burns, and Mr. Burns, please excuse me, I'm not gonna talk long, but you have to give me a minute, okay? <laughs> it's because of Anderson County that we're here today because of Fraser. You all just don't know, I talk a lot. I said that, but I've had the hardest time trying to keep this away from that lady. We have really tried it. This has been going on since February. My grandson always, we used to walk around that, that track right there, and we would always come in the morning. But it just so happened that this day, my grandson wanted to come in the afternoon. We came in the afternoon so he could fly his drone. And when we got here, I said to my, my daughter, I said, do you see what I see? And she said, what do you see? I said, the marker land up against the tree. The marker was lying up on against the tree. It was out of the ground. It was out of the ground, do you hear me? And I, I became frantic. I didn't know what to do. I sat there, I prayed, and that's the truth. I'm not saying it because you're sitting here, we prayed. I said, Lord, what are we going to do about this? So, <laughs> of course, I called my cousin Francis and my sister, and I told my cousin Francis what we had seen. So she said, well, maybe we could stick it back in the ground. I said, okay. She said, well, I'm going to dialysis tomorrow, which was that Friday. She said, I'm going to dialysis. I'll bring you some cement by. I said, fine, it's still in our car, hard as a rock. I can't get it out of there. <laughs> but nonetheless, the marker, it, it doesn't look like it's heavy, but it's heavy. It's really heavy. When we came back that Friday morning, three SUVs were on this parking lot. And we didn't ask a soul for help because I have this little thing, you know, I say heave ho, heave whatever, I, whatever it is I need to do, whatever I need to move. I said heave ho because that's the God that I'm trusting to move, whatever it is, and try it, it will work for you. Okay, heave ho. So my grandson said, well, mom, it won't go across the seat. Maybe we need to let the bottom down and put it in the back of the trunk. And we did that. And we carried that marker and we rode and we rode. And then we didn't tell Cousin Francis, I didn't tell my sister that we had gotten it yet. Because really, I, be I became so frantic, you know, because the statues were being vandalized in the States from the, what the media had said, and I did not want it to happen to us. So what we did, we talked to several people, and they told us to whom we could go and speak. So they ended up saying, well, you might as well go to Mr. Burns because he is the person everybody's going to have to go through anyway or go to anyway if you're doing anything in Anderson County. So my daughter said, well, she had met him being a member of the HRC board from Pendleton as a representative. And she said, maybe I will ask him. And she did. He allowed us to come in. We met with him about five, ten minutes. Might not have been that long. He said to us, I will help you, but it will not be a Star Wars Descendants project. It will be an Anderson County project. So all of this time, my cousin Francis, I wouldn't tell her what was going on. I wouldn't tell cousin Margaret, but I am not about anything but unity. And it's, it's, I, I, it won't ever be anything else but that. But I was afraid to say it because I'm sure the marker was out of the ground to gain some some kind of credibility. That maybe it was just, you see, if it had fallen on the ground, it would have laid there because it was too heavy for the average person to pick up. So I know that evidently it could have been removed and that's all right because it's, it's reconnected. Mr. Burns said, whatever you need to do to get it done, we will, Anderson County will work with you to get it done. This is the result of what you see. Every time I would go down there, I said, well, I haven't told my family yet. Because I didn't want to cause, I didn't, first of all, I didn't want my family to think that I was gullible, that I was soft. I didn't want them to think I was scared because I'm not really scared of anything. Because God said I don't have to be. But I didn't want to start any confusion for us here in Anderson County. And that's why I wouldn't tell the media. Of course I called my baby. <laughs> I call her that all the time. She, 
she's sitting right there with her, you know, I call her that. I call my sister. I call Jen, which is what I mostly do most of the time. I call Jim and I told them what had happened. And I told Jim I kept it in the car. I showed it to my daughter in the car. I told Jen about it. And I'm saying all of this. Now, it's no point in getting scared. Mr. Burns assigned Donna, Miss Owens, to start working with us as a specialist. And in doing that, she let us, I said, I'll, we'll separate ourselves from this marker once this is over. And we kept it all of that time. On April 20th, it was completed. And we got new benches. They got new benches here. You see the boulders. It did something for the park. Went over and met uh, Pastor Helper. I went over and met her. Like Pastor Allison right there. She prayed with me. You see, I'm accustomed to hugging everybody. And sometimes people see me coming out, they just turn away. But she did. She embraced me. And she hugged me as she prayed for us. Is James here? This is what we're going to do. We have a little contribution for some folks. And what we're going to ask is that when we call your name, at least stand and get your contribution. Mr. Burns, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, now I have to get my, now I can tell you all these names. But before I do that, Alma just told me that she directed the uh, school, Corporate Freddy Stowers, we were there on the 24th. They treated us, just like Cousin Francis said, royal. You have principal parks, a sense of principal halls, Miss Debbie Andrews, who took pictures. I don't know who's here today, but I'm telling you about the names I remember. I make it a point to remember names and remember people. So we honor you, we praise you, and now we're going to get started. Now, I'm just going to tell you, you can do it, baby, and I'll go, I'll go from whomever they are in my head. Oh, you want me to take the bag? You don't want me to mess up? <laughs> okay, baby. Okay. No, I don't. Thank you. Thank you, baby. I want to tell you all something about this. I wouldn't tell you because it was the hardest thing getting in touch with him. Mr. Bird and Miss Hill down in Fort Jackson, we went down there. And after we went down there, he said to us, I was going to say it last, but I said now, since God intended for me to stop talking to see it, so that's why I dropped this. So I had to say it now. Mr. Bird told us when we were there, we went down there twice, we rode. My grandson, my daughter, and I, we drove to Columbia because all we wanted to do was just take pictures of every place that Uncle Freddie has a memorial, just like in Veterans Park in South Carolina. In Pendleton, Mr. Jim, it's one there. I, I, let me finish this. So what we did, what Mr. Bird said to us, well, you know we have a new Brigadier General. I said no, because before, in 2004, Abraham Turner, the Brigadier General, was here then. He said that the new Brigadier General wants to have camaraderie in the upstate, just like they have in the Midlands and downstate. He really wanted to become familiar with South Carolina upstate. So, oh my goodness, we thought to ourselves, what better time to have him meet someone, and especially from Clemson University, South Carolina State. We have, I mean, no, I mean, no, as far is. as your 21 Don salute today. You have them, and that's a rare thing. <laughs> Anybody can tell you that they live here, but that was a rare thing, and that was done just for you. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? We all can tell you that. So it was really something to be honored by. We are honored by your presence, and we are honored by everything that's been done. It has been done in your honor. And Mr. Gregg, we thank you too. When I asked him would he come, he said yes. I called when we saw the Kentucky on the weekend, we saw a, the storm was saying how it had flooded in Conway, South Carolina. I didn't even know it. And then when I called him, he said, but I'm flying naked. He's here. So God is good. Amen. Love is the answer, okay? So now, I'm gonna get started. What we have is Oh, I put it in my bag, baby. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Okay. This is how we're going.
we're going to do this. We have a little list here for everybody, and you know, Lieutenant Tom, you know what, Colonel, we didn't. We don't, you're the only person that we don't have something for. We, we apologize, oh. but we, we will we will do something about that. Diversion rifles. We have a token for you. Would you please give it to to someone over there? It's a token. I want to take one. You, Richard, would you take one out and read it to us for one, all of them, please? <laughs> Mr. Roy Graggs, we have a token for you. <laughs> Mr. Tom Van Cato, did I pronounce it correctly? We have a token for you. Dr. Corey Williams, we have a token for you. Mm -hmm. Pastor Allison Helvey, we have a token for you. Miss Beverly Charles, we have a token for you. Malik McDuffie, we have a token for you. Now. Okay. We have certificates for these names. Believe it or not, my sister Yule is here today, and my brother Limbo is here. So we have certificates for Lemuel Stowers, Eula Stowers Vance, Mr. Tom Bird, Ms. Loran Hill from Columbia, Ms. Genevieve Brown. We call her our campaign manager. She's always been there for us. Once she said to me, Tony, you can write an article about your Uncle Freddie and put it up in the Historical Society in Town Hall. I said, I don't like causing confusion. I haven't done anything on his behalf. But you see, God met the mark of all because we needed to do something today. Ms. Dana Owens, Mr. Jim Smith. Mr. Smith. No, but you have some very short. <laughs> I'm from Mr. Smith. Stowers Elementary School. Is anyone here from there? We have a. Hi, how are you? We have a certificate for you all. And Dustin? <laughs> We're very excited about the opportunity. I just want to say that Anderson County worked so hard with us. You talk about putting people together who are from different cultural backgrounds, who have different attitudes and demeanors, who look different, come from different places, and they can do this. Those are special people. So we have our last two wonderful, you're way over there, so you mind as well stand, please. Our last two gifts to give out um, for Ms. Phyllis White, who is the administrative assistant to Mr. Rusty Burns. She was able to keep everything together. Please advance. Um, and to her, we have a plaque that says, Historical Light. Phyllis White for your efforts in coordinating the success of the 2018 Centennial Commemoration of Corporal Freddie Stowers from all of the Stowers descendants. We appreciate you and thank you so much. gratitude to Mr. Rusty Burns, Anderson County Administrator, for his tireless and earnest efforts in the rededication of the marker for the 2018 Centennial Commemoration of Corporal Freddie Stowers. Would you please come and get this right? Thank you so much. Please. Phyllis White. Teresa Bannister and all the people who work for Anderson County and our county council who encourage us to do these things and supports us in everything that we do. Uh, I'll accept this for all of us. Thank you. And that is true. So thank you very much for coming. I'm going to step to the side because there's something else that needs to be done now. Thank you. We're so, pre we're so appreciative. Thank you all so much.
to each and every one of you. We thank you. For those of you that traveled here, we thank God for your highway mercy on your way home. And we thank God that each one of you can share love amongst yourselves and everybody else. At that school, there were 550 kids who would go out into the world and know who prayed. Moving forward, um, it will be quite an honor to look across here, know now Freddie Stowers, I have been privileged to work with Miss Tony and have been honored that God has placed us in the same path to um, make this day amazing, amazing. And I am honored to be here with you all. Thank you for this opportunity. I can't begin to imagine what sacredness this day was going to hold and what it will hold moving forward in the history of our community right here in Sandy Springs. I invite you to join me in prayer. The Holy God, come Holy Spirit in might and wonder. Oh God, we are here this day. We are here this day because you have called us each here we are here this day and have honored a hero and we have heard what a hero looks like it's not a hero by society standards today it is through the sacrifice of military men and women